Good morning. You have a God's eye view this morning of worship. The big picture, the expanse of life. Today is often called the Sunday after Pentecost. It's also called Trinity Sunday, where we take time to explore and remember that there are three names that we often invoke, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So in light of the fact that we had Pentecost Sunday last Sunday, we want to hold on to that Pentecost spirit, and we want to grab a hold of this Sunday by singing this song, Pass It On. all around the world. I often talk about how when we meet together and we meet with God, God meets us right where we are. Today, I want you to remember through this hymn that God needs us to meet us in the big picture. How great thou art. I see the 
I'd like to use a very traditional call to worship to help us to remember that. Now, you can either follow along in the email script that was sent out, the worship lead sheet, or I have a cheat for you. Pay attention, though. Things get tricky. Are you ready? Here we go. Sovereign God, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You created plants, trees, and water that nurture and nourish. You ready? And you declared it very good. You created fish and birds and mammals in perfect balance. And you declared it very good. You created us in the diversity of your image and you declared it very good you breathed your breath into all of creation and indeed it is very good thanks be to god amen So we had hoped that by this Sunday, with all good things, that we would be coming together as the presence of Christ in the building with the wisdom of those who are the leaders of this congregation. It was decided unanimously that we were not ready yet, that we needed to put some more things in order and we also needed to allow the virus to continue to settle down so that no one would be harmed. So I kind of went home and had to do some rethinking. And all of a sudden it came to me, do you know what's been missing in our time together? 
that moment where we acknowledge that all of us literally are children of God. So I thought, let's have the children's chat back. You game to go with me? Here we go. Notice I, on a videotape, I can't tell if you say yes or no. Isn't that kind of fun? I like this. I have a gift. And I will be at the church from 11 to 12 today, Sunday, the 7th of June, with the gifts. For all of those who are our we members, our younger members, I have a box of crayons. In our call to worship, we talked about how we are all made in God's image, and that is a diverse image. And we have to pay attention to that because, let's face it, it's easy if everybody is just like us to love. We must be open to the diversity. So I went out and we got some things that make diversity a fun thing. Now, here is a box of crayons waiting for you, but I want something from you. And you know I always do this. I want you to take your box of crayons and I want you to open it up. And I want you to pick out the crayon that is your most favorite color. Now, I got to tell you, I'm, I really like blue a lot, so I'm going to pull the blue crayon out. I love to wear blue. I love to have blue on my watch because I can change the colors on my watch. I love that the sky is blue. The challenge is, I don't want you to keep your favorite crayon. I want you to take something that you really, really like, and I want you to give it to somebody who needs to have a better day. Maybe it's somebody in your family. Maybe it's somebody else that you want to give it to. You know, if you can't see them or touch them, you can put it in an envelope and write their name on it and say, a gift for you. But I want you to give it away because this is what God does for us. God gives us the best gift, the gift of life, the gift of love, and the gift of hope. You go do that. Will you do that for me? And we'll have fun with our crayons, all right? will color the world all kinds of colors. Jesus, thank you for helping us welcome new people into our lives. Amen? Amen. Oh, by the way, I'll hand it out of this because this is a very old-fashioned offering plate, and I'll make sure I hand it safely to you. Now, friends, I want to turn to our scripture for the morning. Uh, we've had many expressions of God's faithfulness already, but the scripture is the very end of the Gospel of Matthew, the time where Jesus says this is the commissioning service. Commissioning service is a way of acknowledging that something is never going to be the same again. These are going to now be the priorities in our lives. What came before us is neither here nor there. For now we take the command of Christ into all the world. From the 28th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 16th verse. Now the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Jesus came near and spoke to them. I've received all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. Look, I myself will be with you every day until the end of this present age. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As you have received this scripture, now I would invite you to use the gift that Deb is going to offer you in the gift of music to meditate. What word jumped out at you? What phrase caught your attention? Or did you drift off and forget to listen? Come back, center in, and ask God to meditate in your heart with you. of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. The word make is a hard word for me to hold, to hold in my heart, to hold in my mind. Um, have you ever tried to make somebody do something? Um, to, to, you can make a loaf of bread, you can make yourself learn a new habit, but it's very hard to make people do things. That word make is just really hard. So you know me and you know my love of words, so I went back into the Hebrew language and said, what is the energy of the word to make. And the phrase that is used in the Old Testament would come from the phrase to bring forth. Now if you've never hung around farmers, I would highly recommend that you find a farmer to get to know and talk to them about the job of being a farmer. Farmers don't make coal corn. Farmers don't make cows. Farmers don't make wheat, but they help it come forth. They are a part of bringing life forth. I'm intrigued by the concept of making people. Um, if you've noticed, the news has even reported that it's very hard to make people wear masks and you know when we come back 
we're going to ask that everybody wears masks, but I guarantee you, nobody will be able to make you do it. It is something that you do because you choose to. There was a day not long ago where uh, a friend of mine needed uh, desperately to know that I really appreciated all that she was doing. I wanted her to know that I was grateful. So I decided I would make her a cup of coffee. Well, I've done a lot of research into artificial sweeteners and I have landed on a, a particular kind of sweetener called stevia. It's a, a naturally occurring sweetener. You can buy stevia leaves and chop them up and they taste that they make the water sweet with a good tea. It's kind of like mint tea and it's just wonderful and fun and and the reason why I did all the research into the artificial sweeteners is because somewhere along the line I discovered that for those of us who have dyslexic brains, one of the things you don't want to do is feed it artificial sweeteners. It messes with our minds. We don't think very good. We get a foggy brain. So I, I was just really grateful to find stevia. And, and so on the phone I said, well, what do you take in your coffee? Well, a little bit of cream and, and a little bit of sweet and low. And I went, cool, I will bring you a cup of coffee because I really want to make you feel good. I want you to know that I am grateful. I was going to make this woman feel appreciated. Get the phrase, make her feel appreciated. So I come in and I have a cup of coffee and I hand her the coffee and she goes, oh, thank you, and got a great big smile on her face and she went on about her work I went on about my work and I was proud of myself. I had made her happy by making her a cup of coffee. Now, later on, I came back and I said, hey, what'd you think of your coffee? Was it good? She said, oh, it was a great cup of coffee. I said, that's stevia. And there was this long, and she said, hmm, I'm allergic to stevia. It makes it feel like my muscles are trying to rip themselves off the bone. Oh, and, oh my goodness, all I wanted to do was make you feel good and feel appreciated and here I have set you up for a terrible night's sleep. Friends, Sometimes we just don't know. We don't know what's behind the picture. We don't know what's behind our expectations. We don't know until we ask, until we spend time, until we create a relationship. Now, I did apologize, and I hope that the night wasn't really bad, but I also learned that stevia is a drug that some people are allergic to. And I promise you, I will never again assume that I can just teach somebody something or make them happy. I will ask about it. Jesus said, go into all the world and make disciples. What would happen if we took that, that forcing image, that word make, we use the phrase, bring forth that which God created, because it is our understanding that oneness with God is the greatest experience of life. Jesus shows us the way that through the forgiveness of the cross, we can be one with God. We can be whole again. To bring forth 
this spirit of healing and wholeness. Now remember, we've explored the, explored the word healing before and that it comes from the Hebrew understanding of knitting and weaving together. That in this world, if we really are going to move forward, we are going to have to learn how to be woven together with the people that God has created, not the people that we approve of, or who look like us, or who act like us, or whom we have not even taken time to know. Remember my favorite story. The day I walked into my college dorm room, I knew I would be one of three. What I didn't know is that both my other roommates would be African American in skin color and in experience. And for the next months that we were together, we learned from each other. And I knew that Alicia and Joanne's souls were as tender and as real as mine. Dear friends, we are to be the ones who encourage and nurture the healing of the world, the healing of all the nations, as we use the example of Christ on how to live that way. We're going to sing a hymn now entitled, For the Healing of the Nations, my prayer is that the words sit in your souls and no matter what the price tag, we be willing to be the example of Christ in this world. I often play with different images of what the church is. Sometimes I feel like it's a hospital, a place to come and heal the wounds that so deeply grieve our souls. At other times, I feel like it's a seminary where you sink your roots deep in the knowledge of the infinite love and mercy of God. I also like that it is center, core, the place that we come to to remember what is at the center of our lives. And by remembering allowing the birth of new life to happen through us with God's grace. This is a hymn that reminds us that healing is a dynamic part of our faith.
Remembering that he has told you, human one, what is good and what the Lord requires of you. To do justice, embrace faithful love, and walk humbly with your God. Go in peace, but definitely go. Go. 